A fun little historical trivial bite is that during the height of the Cold War, the U.S. military put such an emphasis on rapid response to an attack on American soil to minimize any foreseeable delay in launching a nuclear missile, for nearly two decades they intentionally set the launch codes at every silo in the U.S. to all zeros. We guess the first thing we need to address is how this even came to be in the first place. Well, in 1962, JFK signed the National Security Action Memorandum 160, which was supposed to ensure that every nuclear weapon the U.S. had had to be fitted with a permissive action link, or PAL. Basically, a small device that ensured the missile could only be launched with the right code and with the right authority. There was a particular concern that nuclear missiles the United States had stationed in other countries, some of which with somewhat unstable leadership could potentially be seized by those governments and launched. Beyond foreign seizure, there are also simply the problem that many U.S. commanders have the ability to launch nukes under their control at any time. Just one commanding officer who wasn't quite right in the head, and World War III begins. To give you an idea of how secure the PAL system was at this time, bypassing one was once described as being, to quote, about as complex as performing a tonsillectomy while entering the patient from the wrong end. This system was supposed to also be essentially hot wire proof, making sure only people with the correct codes could activate the nuclear weapons and launch the missiles. However, though the devices were supposed to be fitted on every nuclear missile after JFK issued his memorandum, the military continually dragged its heels on the matter. In fact, it was noted that a full 20 years after JFK had ordered PALS to be fitted on every nuclear device, half of the missiles in Europe were still protected by simple mechanical locks. Most that did have the new system in place weren't even activated until 1977. On top of that, as noted once in place, the Strategic Air Command set the code to launch the missiles to 0000000. Oh, and also just so everyone was on the same page, the code was handily written down on a checklist handed out to the soldiers. As noted by Dr. Bruce G. Blair, who was once a Minuteman launch officer, this ensured that there was no need to wait for presidential confirmation that would have just wasted valuable Russian nuking time. To be fair, there was also the possibility that the command centers at communication lines could be wiped out, so having a bunch of nuclear missiles sitting around unlaunchable because nobody had the code was seen as a greater risk by the military brass than a few soldiers simply deciding to launch the missiles without proper authorization. Speaking of Dr. Blair, he had previously attempted to communicate the serious security problem at the nuclear silos to congressmen starting around 1973. When that information fell on mostly deaf ears, he decided to outline it with the public in 1977, where he described how just four people acting in tandem could easily activate a nuclear launch in the silos he had worked in. Further, amongst other things, the PAL system McNamara had touted was barely in operation and thus launches could be authorized by anyone without presidential authority. He also noted how virtually anyone who asked for permission to tour the launch facilities was granted it with little to no background checks performed. It is perhaps no coincidence that the PAL systems were all activated and the codes changed the same year Dr. Blair published his article on the subject. 